So we can look at this in terms of uh, um, an example. And the example we're going to look at is elephants. And we're going to look at this example because it's a little more complicated. We can see how we could take that previous system and adjust it if we have a new situation. So what happens with elephants? So elephants, uh, what happens is a mama elephant meets a papa elephant. They fall in love and they have a baby. And the baby is the first year is going to be a yearling. So this is the most vulnerable, vulnerable point for an elephant's life is as a year, yearling. Um, after a year, who, the ones that survive are going to uh, grow up and or, or grow out of that stage and move into a juvenile class. Juvenile class are going to be more robust, a little bit more robust, and they're going to be bigger. And uh, hopefully those that survive that, uh, that's going to take about another five years. So um, every year, about whoever's in there, you know, roughly four-fifths are going to stay there, and a fifth is going to graduate. Uh, that's not entirely clear because some of them are not going to survive. But then those that graduate are going to move on to the adolescent class or adolescent stage. And the adolescent stage now, this is going to be a group of, of um, elephants that are even more robust. This is going to be another five years for the adolescent stage. And uh, those in that stage, as you go from year to year, some percentage is going to remain. And then some percentage is going to go off and become uh, a grown adult. Now, the, this set of adults is going to be different from the ones that were having babies. This is going to be uh, where the life stages are going to be a little more complicated. And the reason is, is that um, for elephants, they have a two-year gestation period, and then there's another three years before they have uh, babies again. So we're going to divide the, divide the adults up into two stages. One is going to be a fertile adult. The fertile adults... Um, uh, can become pregnant, and if they become pregnant, they're going to move into a group we're going to call uh, the reproducing adults. So basically, the adults are going to go back and forth between two different stages. Uh, the, re the fertile ones move into the reproducing. The reproducing stage hopefully will produce a baby, and then after five years, they're going to move into the back into the class of fertile adults, and then those fertile adults then have the opportunity to become pregnant again and go back and forth between those two stages. And then uh, each year, then the number of uh, new elephants that enter are going to enter in through the, uh, into the um, uh, yearling stage. And that's going to be some percentage of the number of adults or the density of adults that are in that reproducing stage. Okay, so now for our state, we're going to keep track of the yearlings, the juveniles, adolescents, and then the adults are broken up into two groups, fertile adults and reproducing adults. And this is going to be for some time level K. And we're choosing our time level to coincide with the infants. In this case, we're going to call them yearlings. So uh, each time level is one year. And after one year, the yearlings, are, those that survive, are going to move directly into the juvenile class. And then for the juvenile class, right, this is going to take about four to five years. And then so each year, some percentage remain in the juvenile class, some become adolescents, and then on and on and on. And so this will keep track of um, the state of our system. And what's different here from our previous one is we've taken the adults and created two new different groups here. And we had to do that because <clears throat> of the very long uh, cycle that it takes in order to uh, give birth and wean a, an elephant. So what do we have here? So now for our graphical representation here, we've got our yearlings. <clears throat> After one year, they all become either juveniles or uh, they don't make it. The juveniles, right, some percentage remain. Some move on to become adolescents. The adolescents, some uh, remain. Some move on, uh, become fertile adults. And then between the fertile and uh, reproducing adults, they're going to move back and forth between these stages. So for the fertile adults, uh, if they manage to uh, become pregnant, they're going to move into the reproducing adult stage. Otherwise, they return and wait a year. For the reproducing adults, then there's 
This is going to take about five to seven years in total. And then uh, after that, they're going to either move back into the uh, fertile adult stage and or not survive. And then some percentage is going to remain in here year after year. And each year, there's going to be some fraction that produce a newborn elephant. Okay, And so now in terms of our uh, matrix representation here, so our matrix B that represents this transition, you've got, so let's see, let's keep track of this. So our E is going to be our, oops, our yearling. Then we've got the juvenile, the adolescent. Then we have the fertile adult and the reproducing adult. So now we're going to have five columns. So this is going to be F times R is going to be the uh, percentage that give calves each year. So in terms of the juveniles, there's going to be uh, whoever survives from being a yearling plus whoever remains in the juvenile class. And then for the adolescent class, we're going to have whoever moves in uh, from being a juvenile plus the percentage that remains. And then let's see, then for the uh, uh, fertile adult class, we're going to have the adolescents that move into this class, plus those that remain, just coming from there. And then we've got some percentage of the uh, reproducing adults that move into this class as well. And finally, we've got the reproducing adult. There's some percentage that uh, fertile adults right, that transition in and some percentage that remain in this class from year to year. And this thing right here is going to give us our linear transformation for how we go from uh, next year based on the previous year. Okay, so what's going to happen here uh, is this, is that we're going to have, we're going to start off with some initial distribution. We want to know what happens in the next year in the next year, we're going to use our linear transformation to go from T to, uh, to uh, sorry, from E1, sorry, from E0 to E1, we just take T times this. And then for E2, we just take T times the previous year. For E3, we take T times the previous year and go on and on. But note, E1 is just T E0. So this is going to be T squared E0. And then for E3, it's T times E2, but E2 is T squared E0. So this is going to be T cubed E0. And then for E4, it's going to be T times E3, but we just said that's T cubed E0. So that's going to be T to the fourth E0. And then T5 is T times E4. What's E4 is T to the fourth E0. It's T to the fifth E0. And then E5 is T to the fifth E0. So our E to 6 is going to be T6 E0. So the important of this matrix T is that it's going to give us uh, an idea of the dynamics of what's going to happen as we move forward in time. And we can use this to try to understand whether or not we're going to see growth or decay or what. Okay. And how do we do this? Well, if, and this is a big if, right? So don't underestimate that. So if our eigenvectors of this matrix form a basis, that means no matter what initial distribution you give me, I can write it as a linear combination of the eigenvectors. So now when I find what's the distribution for the next year, I'm just going to take t. So this is going to be my e0. This is this linear combination. Because it's a linear transformation, I can now write it as uh, alpha 1 times this plus alpha 2 times this. And these are, I'm assuming that these v's, oops, is an eigenvector. So what does that mean? That means that t times vi is going to be lambda i vi. So that means this thing right here, t v1 is lambda 1 v1, t v2 is lambda 2 v2, and t v n is lambda n v n, from the definition of what it means to be an eigenvector. And 
now I can find my E2 by taking T times E1. And if I do that, so now this is my E1. I plug straight into there. Again, this is a linear transformation. So I can write this in terms of TV1, TV2, up to TVN. Since these are eigenvectors, this is going to be lambda1 v1. It's already times lambda1, so I get lambda1 squared, lambda2 squared, lambda n squared, and you keep going on and on and on. And what's going to happen is that the modulus of these eigenvectors is going to tell us whether or not each of these individual terms are going to grow or decay. Because as I take the raise these to bigger and bigger powers, if the modulus is less than 1, then as I raise this to uh, bigger and bigger powers, this is going to go to 0. Right? And the same thing here, if that's the case. But if this thing right here, suppose one of these is bigger than 1, then that means as I raise it to bigger and bigger powers, this thing is going to grow geometrically. All right, thank you.